Hi, Dr. Eric Cobb. Welcome to video one of our brain training or brain fitness training series. Really excited to share this information with you today. We're going to start getting into kind of the hard sciencey stuff here to give you an idea and an understanding of how to really begin implementing this information for yourself and for your clients. So to begin, I'm going to start off talking about not you, but clients. People that walk through the door going, hey, I want help. Now, every time you think about a client, you also need to set yourself in that position because all of us, when we look at our lives, we go, you know what, there are things I probably would like to change. And everything I'm going to share with you is going to impact on those change attempts, whether that's for you or for the people that you work with. So in our courses, we tell people, listen, what you have to begin to understand is that uh, if you want your business to flourish, you need to help people achieve what they're actually asking for. And when you think about the fitness world or the pain world, whichever one you're, you find yourself working in the most, people come in and they normally say, you know what, I want to change my body. So we talk about body comp change. I want to lose weight. I want to gain weight. I want to have more muscle, whatever it is. So people come for body comp change. They come for injury prevention. If you're working with athletes or particularly if you're in a, a demographic where you're working with people that are perhaps uh, uh, part of the baby boomer generation, they're now wanting to, to have lives that are more fulfilling. They want to be able to do more without worrying about getting hurt. So they come for injury prevention. We have people, if they're athletic, that want performance enhancement. Hey, I want to run faster, jump higher. I want to swim faster. I want to get a better time in my next triathlon. Hey, I love to lift weights. I want to enter a powerlifting competition. It doesn't really matter, but people want performance enhancement. And then finally, people will often talk about, hey, you know what? I've got this shoulder thing. I've got pain. Can you help me with that? Now, those are the reasons that people say they come to you for. You know, if you have them fill out their little form, they go, yeah, I want to do this, I want to do this. But we always tell everyone in our training uh, system that really people come not just for those four reasons, but for a fifth reason, which is even more important. They come for motivation and accountability. They, if they were able to do this on their own, they would be. And so they're coming to you, expecting you to know more than them, to have energy to share with them, and to be able to give them a plan to help them achieve what they want. So we always tell our trainers, listen, when, it, when people are talking to you, what they're really saying is, I want to be different. I want to feel differently about my body. I want to feel differently about how I move through the world. And so when you start to realize that, yes, they want to change their body comp, yes, they want to be stronger, whatever it is, ultimately they're saying I want to be different. And that feeling, that feeling of being different, lives in the brain. And so the target of everything that we do, whether we've ever thought about it this way or not, is their brain. And so I'm going to start to give you a little bit of information about how the brain works. Um, because once you begin to understand this, it's so cool. It begins to really change your thought process on how do I help them achieve this. So what we're going to do is we're going to imagine that we have a brain in our hands. All right. So this hand is the front of the brain. This hand is the back of the brain. And I'm going to warn you that if you actually try to do this in the real world, you might go to jail. So I don't want you to go get a brain. All right. So just imagine. So we've got the front of the brain. We've got the back of the brain. Now, if, if you see the back of the brain hand, this is a little bit lower because if you look at the shape of an actual brain, we've got this part back here called a cerebellum. And the cerebellum actually means little brain. And so we've got this big part and we've got this little brain that sits at the back. This guy right here, super important. I'm going to tell you why. Because the way that we function, all right, the way that we function is that the back of the brain really keeps the front half of the brain alive. And I need to explain to you what I mean by that. Because whenever we think about us ourselves as human beings, like all the cool stuff that makes us humans, my ability to think, my ability to make a decision, my ability to plan, all those different things, that's really stuff that for the most part, and again, I'm speaking in broad, broad strokes or generalizations, but most of that happens up here in the front half of the brain, the frontal lobe. That's where we talk about where executive functions live, all those cool things. But the problem is that this part of the brain can't work as well as it, as a, uh, or as optimally as possible if the back part of the brain isn't healthy. And the back part of the brain really houses what's called the integration center, the cerebellum, for uh, nerve endings, for our eyesight, for our hearing, for all the different things that allow us to move through the world appropriately. And so that may sound a little bit convoluted right now, but the basic idea I want you to begin to understand is that whenever we're targeting the brain, in the beginning we're talking about the back half of the brain. Now, some more information about the brain. Your brain really needs two primary things to stay alive. The first thing it needs is excellent fueling. Now, when we talk about good brain fuel, we're talking about glucose, we're talking about oxygen. Those are our two primary things. Again, I'm oversimplifying.
But the fact is that if we don't eat well, we don't breathe well, our brain's going to suffer. And whenever our brain suffers, that cost us something. Maybe that cost us our mood. Maybe it cost us our shoulder pain. All those different things begin to matter. So any training uh, system that you share with yourself or with someone else has to take into account fuel, all right, so breathing and food. So we talk a lot about that in our system. But in the beginning stages, almost more importantly, is the second element that the brain needs to stay alive, which is what we call activation. Activation basically means that your brain is a use it or lose it organ. If it is not stimulated over time, that area will begin to degrade. Now, it may not die completely, but the fact is you'll become less and less able to utilize that part of the brain. And that has tremendous ramifications. If you think about people that you know, there are people that go through life and from their 20s to their 30s, they move a little bit less. From the 30s to their 40s, maybe they get a knee injury and now they go, oh, I have to give up running or I can't really bike anymore, or, I can't do this stuff. So they move even less. By the time they hit 52, 53, their, their movement box, right, the size of the box that they used to move in has shrunk and it continues to shrink and continues to shrink. And if you think about your own history, what you'll probably see is that you know people that as their movement box has shrunk, their pain levels have gone up, their performance has gone, gone down, and in fact, you even begin to see their personality shrink, in essence, as they move less. There are neural rationales and reasons for that, and you have to address those in your training. Now, I'm going to give you one more piece of information about the brain, because this is going to really start to play into what I'm going to share with you in the next video. Years ago, we started trying to figure out what's the, what's the running program of the brain? In other words, how does it function? What's its primary job? What's its primary goal? And over time, it's become more and more clear. So I'm going to give you a few words to hold on to. The number one thing that your brain wants to do is to keep you alive. And when I say keep you alive, I mean keep you alive today, not in the future, not a month from now, not a year from now. Your brain functions in the immediate. And it will do all kind of crazy stuff to help you stay alive right now. So survival is its number one job. Now what's fascinating about the brain is the way that it achieves survival. Survival is achieved by, by our big human brain allowing us to do something that almost uh, no other species can do, especially to the level that we do it, and that is predict. So uh, I can go into a whole lot of historical stuff for you, but to save time, I just want you to understand that your brain is designed specifically as a predictive uh, organism or predictive organ. If you're going about your daily business, your brain is constantly coming up with pot potential scenarios that may occur. You're walking out to your car, you see a dog coming up, your brain starts to go, hey, is that a friendly dog? Is that a mean dog? Is a dog over there? How close is it to me? Can I get around my car? How fast can I get my keys in? What if I drop my keys? Oh my gosh. So your brain takes and it basically comes up with all these terrible uh, uh, possibilities so that you can be more prepared. The problem is that prediction is not just about imagining scenarios. Prediction goes as deeply uh, into your body as it does into your brain. So in our next video, what I'm going to be sharing with you is how your brain begins to build what we call predictive maps of movement. Now, I promise I'm trying to relate all this into the pain relief and you know, performance arenas. And it's very important for you to start to understand this stuff. Whenever you have a client that doesn't handle an exercise well or is not progressing, there is a predictive problem somewhere in their brain uh, uh, in conjunction with the exercises that you're doing with them. I can just make it f a full stop just like that. So one of the great gifts we're going to try and give you in this process is helping you understand what not to do with people because if their brain can't understand it, you're not going to see the progress that you're looking for. So as you think through this, a few things to remember. People are coming to you not to lose weight, not to get stronger. They're coming to you because they want to feel different. They want to be different. If you want to help them be different, you have to target the control mechanism of the body, which is the brain. The brain needs two things to stay alive. It needs to have fuel, and it needs to be activated. It needs stimulus. Use it or lose it. And so from that, the last thing to remember is that your brain has some overriding principles. Overriding programs are going to be involved in everything that you do. It wants to keep you alive. So survival is number one, and it helps you survive through prediction. Now, if you remember all that stuff, we'll wrap it all up for you in the next video to help you understand how that really begins to influence how we're going to train someone. Have a great day.